Hello, and welcome again to Emmanuel Church of the Deaf. I am Father Ray Fleming, and I am Deacon Pat Graybell. We are happy to celebrate today with you as you join with us and we join with you. Three days ago we celebrated Ascension Thursday that celebrated Jesus' ascension. He's risen from the dead 40 days on earth with his followers and then his ascension into heaven. Next we prepare for Pentecost. We share in the ascension and we share in Pentecost, and we still celebrate Easter. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. As we continue to prepare in this celebration, in faith we remember that God has been wonderful and kind to us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Now, let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Savior of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers. There were a group of about 120 persons in one place. He said, My brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of of John until the day on which he was taken up from us. Become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed to Judas, called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed. You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord has set his throne in heaven. Join me. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, If God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us. And his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us of his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testify that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God God remains in him, and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love. And whoever remains in love remains in God. And God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Join me. Alleluia. Alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you 
and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Thank you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, Holy Father, keep them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one just as we are one. When I was with them, I protected them in your name that you gave me, and I guarded them, and none of them was lost except the son of destruction, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you. I speak this in the world so that they may share my joy completely. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Father Ray just mentioned, a few days ago we celebrated the Ascension of the Lord. This Sunday is the seventh Sunday of Easter. Next week we will celebrate Pentecost. We are in between right now, and in between the Ascension and Pentecost. There's some feeling of stretching like a rubber band between two things. We're caught between the world. We see this world full of awful things happening. And at this time, we know that Jesus would not leave us orphans. This is his comfort to us during this time. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to continue to be with us. God's love persists in our midst. So we can celebrate with joy and gladness. As I read through the scriptures in preparation for today, I saw that Jesus said to his apostles, as we believe in Jesus and follow him, our lives in this world do not mean that we belong to the world. As we go through the readings today, it reminds us that God wants us to become one. 
as the Trinity is one, we join into that and become one as a people. I was thinking about what that means, and something came to me. Back in 1954, I was probably 14 or 15 years old. And a major operation on my ear, because I was learning how to dive at that time. And they have single-celled organisms in the water had kind of gotten in my ear and had caused an infection, and that infection didn't seem to go away. So I went to the hospital to get a surgery on my ear. It was a four and a half hour operation. I was out through the whole thing, but the doctor who worked on my ear had to remove all the little tiny mastoid bones as he went through and cleaned out. And the area was so raw, they actually took a patch of skin, just a thin layer of skin from my thigh, and put that in to patch the area that they'd worked on. For several years, part of my thigh had this red square on it, this bright red pink square that kind of looked like this. And over the years, it started to become a little bit more pink than red. And as time went on, it became a little bit whiter. And now it looks like this. And you can see it so clearly. And now as I see it again, it's gone back to the regular skin color. I can't even see it anymore. It really gave me an idea for a metaphor for today. We are born and gr grow up and go through our lives struggling in the world. We go to church and we do our best, but we still feel caught in this tension. But the more we listen to the teachings of Christ, as God wants us to become more like him, I feel like that red irritation of being in the world starts to turn a little bit pink, and maybe white. But as time goes on, we can start to fit into the fabric of what God wants us to be. We have all kinds of skin colors, but inside, all of us can become one together, as Jesus calls us to do. So I thought about that. In our first reading, Peter realizes it's time replace Judas, as he had left them 11 instead of 12. And you look at Judas, he had been learning from Jesus for about three years. But he became caught into the world's greed and money and desire and temptation. I think that Judas may have become depressed looking at Jesus' teachings. He, wanted, he was impatient. He wanted Jesus to solve the world's problems and overthrow Rome, perhaps. He wanted to take over and become a ruler of the world, but he couldn't wait. Temptation overtook him and became caught by greed. Peter lied about Jesus three times. Do you think he would belong to the world as well? 
put Peter saw Jesus and realized he was the Christ. And was chosen to be a leader because he didn't belong to the world. He belonged to Jesus. And as time went on, Peter realized out of this 120 people, it was time to select a new apostle. They prayed about it, they thought about it, and they had an idea. They had to select someone who had been with Christ during his time of teaching. They had seen Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist and been with him all the way through to the crucifixion and resurrection and ascension. So they had to choose. And of the two, they chose Matthias to become the new apostle. Peter didn't do it on a hunch. He followed Old Testament principles and realized in the Psalms it said that it that he should be replaced. He was following the scripture. And showed us that the Holy Spirit was within him. Next week on Pentecost, we all receive it, but the Holy Spirit had been there from the beginning of the world as God breathed the Holy Spirit into us and gave us all life here on earth. It was all part of God's plan for us. In the second reading, it's really interesting. Jesus did not leave us orphans. He didn't leave the twelve to be alone by themselves as he ascended. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with them until he came again. So that our hearts would be filled with joy and celebration of this. Jesus also didn't leave us alone. He said, in a world filled with sinners and sin and violence and fear of ego and greed, we're not trapped here. God saved us by sending his only begotten son, Jesus. He came to save us. And as he came, he became one of us. He became human. Now, as he ascends to heaven, he opens the invitation for us to become one with one another and with God. And the last sentence in that reading says God is love and whoever remains in love remains in God and God in him we are one not separate we become love as it is within us as we share it with one another is God's love in the Lord's prayer it says forgive us as we forgive those who trespass against us you see God first forgives us our trespasses we have to remember that that's the good news And in between that, 
we're stuck in the middle there. We have to remember to hold on to the knowledge that God loves us always, but has always loved us, and loves us forever after. It's wonderful news. In the Gospels, if you imagine Jesus praying the night before he was taken and crucified, he was still asking God to protect us, to protect his people. That is the power of love that persists every day inside us we can ask for God's love, for protection, as we forgive others as he forgives us. That's how we show love. Remember, we don't have to love other people. God loved us first. And in that unity with God, we can bring unity to others. We are blessed. We're truly blessed. We receive the Eucharist, see? And in that Eucharist is our vaccine. prevent against the disease of the world, disease of hatred, of bickering, of boasting. His love fills us and protects us. This is the story of our faith. Here's you. about that. God first loved us. We didn't go and love God. No, he had already loved us and drew us to himself. And now we are charged to draw to one another. What a wonderful message. Now as we draw ourselves to God as he has drawn himself to us, let us look throughout the world and think of who needs his love. Let us pray for those leaders that their first priority be helping those to be united to God and united to one another. We offer this prayer to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray for our church leaders, including Pope Francis. They try to clean our church, to prioritize love and protecting children and those who have experienced sexual abuse, those who are poor, that they may receive the support they need, that all of us within in ourselves may continue to spread the good news. We offer this the prayer to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, especially this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that there may be enough vaccine that we may heal our world, make our world a better more unified place to show God's unity with us and his love for us. We offer this prayer to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray for those who have passed away from this terrible disease or other illnesses, that they may rest in peace with God and see him in his fullness of love. That his comfort may come down from heaven to support the 
families who are grieving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. Lord God, your promises are not to leave us orphans. You promise to adopt us, to become part of your holy family. Help us to love one another as a family. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offering that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, almighty and eternal God, especially during this Easter time. In Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. 
Take holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he first took the bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper had ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Now, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray 
in the way that our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all, and with your spirit. Christ's peace is here. Let us share that with one another. Ray, peace be with you. I love you. Same to you, Pat. Peace to all of you. We love you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Join me. For those of you who cannot receive your communion directly, join me in prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Hear us, O God, our Savior, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church what has already come to pass in Christ, her head who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Now go with peace in your hearts and continue to give thanks to God for his love. Thanks be to God.